carousel of color. Wonderful, wonderful color. Walt Disney presents... And now your host, Walt Disney. On our last program of Gallagher Goes West, our young newspaper man had an idea he could hike up the circulation of the Brimstone Blast if only he had a horse. So with his boss's blessing, an old Spanish saddle and 10 bucks, Gallagher bought himself a wild Mustang from a friendly young rancher. The only catch was, Gallagher had to break the critter himself. But he stuck with it. More or less. After two days of the roughest work he ever did in his life, he had himself a riding horse. Then, as if he didn't have enough trouble for one weekend, our young reporter found himself smack in the middle of one of the most sensational murder cases ever to hit the Southwest. Judge. The way things look to me, there'll be a lynch mob waiting for us when we get to town. Sure, if there's a lynch mob, they're gonna have to get you over my dead body. If you're lying there dead, Sheriff, it won't do us much good if we're up there swinging. Now, suppose you meander back to town and leave us to think it over. Well, Joe, I'm not going to risk bloodshed just to bring you in today. But bring you in, I will. Hey, folks. Gallagher was convinced his friends were innocent of this crime, and he set out to prove it. And that turned out to be a pretty desperate bit of business. All right, you men out there, spook your horses. Yeah! Yeah! Let me go join them, Moran. Just tell me where your men are. Morning, Mr. Sneed. Morning, Gallagher. Anything new in the McManus case? Not a thing. Where are you headed for? Well, son, in this particular instance, I don't think that's any of your business. If it's news, it is my business. All right, here's an item that you can use. Uh, J. Havenbrook Sneed, Sheriff of Brimstone, was seen taking out his horse this very pleasant morning for an exercise. Now, you can use that on your society page. <laughs> Very funny. I'm gonna check on something, Wit. Be gone about an hour. What was that all about? <laughs> I wouldn't know.
Mr. Sneed. Gallagher, you wouldn't by any chance be following me, would you? Well, I thought I was. You never give up, do you? No, sir. You're headed for the Carlson Ranch, right, sir? Yes, I am. And you listen to me. You should have said so in town. Saved me a lot of time and trouble. They're coming in, aren't they? Yes, sir, coming in. Did the lawyer send for you? That he did. That doesn't mean they're admitting guilt, does it? No, I suppose all it means is that they're tired of running. They've decided to take a gamble in a fair court trial. Any new evidence in their favor? Not that I know of. Mr. Barlow just said to come out and get him, and that's all you better print. Thanks, Mr. Sneed. I knew you'd be reasonable. Extra, extra, read all about it. Get your latest edition of the blast. Extra, read all about it. Carlson, submit the trial. Extra, read all about it. Carlson, submit the trial. Boy. Paper, Mr. Prentice? What do you mean, surrender? Well, look. See? The blast knows the news even before the prosecuting attorney. page until I get back. Huh? No, I won't. They'll be close by in the hotel, so I'll be looking after them. It's all right. Go along. I hope you understand, Joe. It'll be my duty to press for a conviction. I understand. I want to assure you I take no pleasure in this. Neither do we, Mr. Prentice. this theory about this case, and I figure everything is going to come out all right. You have what? Well, a theory. You see, I helped crack the murder case back east. But this dip was rubbed out by a finger man who was supposed to be his buddy, see? Whatever are you talking about? But what I mean is, the judge's killer could have been paid to do it. Oh. But that's the angle I'm working on, except I need your help. Of course. But how? Well, Moran and Hatfield are still chief suspects, and they're living here at the hotel. So? So I want you to keep your eyes and ears open. Let me know what they do, who they see, stuff like that. Understand? I appreciate your help, Gallagher. But shouldn't we discuss this with our lawyer? That's just what I mean. You mean you suspect Mr. Barlow? Well, not him especially, but everybody. Except me, of course. And my boss, and Sheriff Sneed, and you, and naturally your mother. I should hope so. Well, she's got enough troubles. Besides, you know how women are. They get kind of hysterical. Well, I like that. What do you think I am? Laura. I've got to go now. In the meantime, eyes open and mouth shut. <gasps> oh, excuse me. Oh, how's the hand, Mr. Moran? I see you got your gun back, Mr. Hatfield. You did, too. How about a paper, Jim? One more word on it. Your story's you. on page three. That kid has instincts I don't like. He had his day in court and nothing happened. Forget it. Mrs. Carlson and daughter make escape. Warned by Blast Reporter. You see? All that kid wants is his name in the paper. Anything for a story. 
Oh, it goes further than that. Anybody that can get the drop on me is not just a kid looking for his name in the paper. Hi, Gallagher. Hi, Willie. Say, how's the Bronx? Great. Hey, how about me taking him out for a run? No, thanks. Oh, come on. It won't cost you anything. Sorry. Nobody rides old Crowley but me. Gallagher, got a personal interview with the Carlsons and Mr. Prentice. Give me a hand. Here's your lead on the Prentice statement. Start setting it up, and I'll feed you pages as I write them. Burn! Cap, I'm right here. Come and give Gallagher a hand, will you? Here's the lead on the Carlson statement. Hey, you can't print this. Carlson's number one suspect's in the murder of Judge McManus. What's wrong with it? Well, when you put it like that, it's like we believe it. Like it's final. Listen, son, I find it hard, too, to believe the Carlsons are killers. But that's Prentice's statement, not mine. Hatfield and Moran could have killed the judge. Why aren't they number one suspects? No motive. You know that. One of them could have been hired to do it. That's motive enough. Oh, come on now. You're reaching. Who else but Carlson had a motive? You tell me. I don't know. I'm sure you're going to try and find out. Well, you better hurry, then. Trial's set for tomorrow. Barlow's got to prepare a defense overnight? He seems agreeable. After all, he had more than a week while the Carlsons were on the run. Well, if there's one thing I learned when I was working on the Daily Press, that's never to trust anybody. Everybody what was told... that young man? <laughs> Crowley! Easy boy. <laughs> Told you not to ride him. Oh, yeah, but you didn't tell me it was a one-man horse. Hey, that's right. I got me a one-man brown. Never a dull moment, eh? Since Gallagher came to town, never. Excuse the interruption, folks. Let's see now, where were we? Uh -uh. Oh, yeah, the lead. Got a poker date at seven. Mm. I'm late already. Good evening, Miss Scott. Good evening, Mr. Barlow. Good evening. No, thank you. I have an appointment. Something wrong? No, no. Just that Carlson kid. Like she's trying to put the hex on me or something. I'll be glad when this trial's over. Strange from getting the show on you. Better get in that game, relax, and forget it. See you later. Evening, ma'am. Would you excuse me, Mother? Something wrong? I'm just not very hungry, that's all. Oh, all right, dear. I won't be very long. Thank you. But you needn't hurry. I'll be all right. Poor dear. It's no wonder with the trial and all tomorrow. the judge's watch. Moran has it. Well, that makes him the murderer, doesn't it? Well, how else would he be wearing it? Are you sure about this? Of course I'm sure. When Daddy and the judge used to be friends, and I was a little girl, 
He used to let me hold his watch and listen to a tick. It had a very unusual chain, and I've never seen another like it. Then Moran would never be wearing it openly. Not around here, anyways. He's not wearing it openly. He dumps the whole thing in his pocket, chain and all. Well, now. This is something. What'll we do? Have you told anybody yet? No. I better get you back now. Oh, you don't have to bother. I got here by myself. This is no town for a lady to be out alone at night. <laughs> Mr. Barlow? Well, not yet. I have to get the watch first. With it, we got proof, and without it, we got nothing. So you leave that to me, okay? All right. Anything you say. But you better go before Mother comes. Good night. Good night. Anything else you want, I'll be in my room. Good night, Alan. See you in the morning. <laughs> Gilby? Oh, good evening, Gallagher. Can you tell me who's in room 26? I surely can. It's Mr. Prentice, the territorial attorney. But if you're thinking Thanks, of disturbing him... Oh, Gallagher. I'd like a word with you. Excuse me, Mrs. Carlson. Certainly, Mr. Barlow. Good night. Good night. Gallagher, what are you and Miss Carlson up to? Don't play innocent with me. Look, Mr. Barlow, Laurie and her folks are friends. I'm just trying to be some help, that's all. Ever since the murder, you've been putting your nose into this case and into their lives. Now when it's stopped, you understand? I've got enough to worry me without your meddling. mind telling me what that was all about? What, sir? Laura Carlson. Oh, her. Yeah, her. Well, nothing really. Just a personal matter. But there is something else, though. Remember my theory about somebody higher up? Well, I just saw Hatfield leaving Prentice's room. So? So what would Hatfield be doing there? How would I know? Kind of suspicious, ain't it? No, not at all. As prosecuting attorney, he has to see all kinds of people. Wouldn't it surprise me if you'd seen him talking to the devil himself? And don't try to change the subject. I know what you're up to, you and your theories. You've probably got her conned into thinking you're a red-hot detective, leading the poor kid up the garden path of false hopes about getting her father off a murder charge. Well, I want that stopped, as of now. Now, is that clear? I, I don't like to sound off like that, son. It's just that I don't want you to get mixed up into something you can't handle. You've been around here quite a few weeks now. Irm has gotten kind of fond of you. And I, well, if you were my own son, I'd be saying the same thing. So I'll turn in. How about you? Yes, sir. As soon as I lock this up. Uh, just one more thing, Gallagher. Seeing you're almost a member of the family, maybe we could forget the formal stuff, huh? From now on, how about you calling us Wit and Herm, huh? Okay, sir. Good night, son. Good night, Whit.
Gallagher. I didn't mean to disturb you, Mr. Gilby. What on earth are you doing? Verifying something. At this hour? But to a reporter, Mr. Gilby, time is not of the essence. Can you tell me if a Mr. Moran is still checked in? Moran? Uh, oh, yes, he's still with us. What room is he in? 19. 19? Uh-huh. That's upstairs in the back, huh? No, upstairs in the front, the corner room. Is he in? Yes, came in an hour ago. I certainly hope you're not planning on disturbing him. No, sir, Mr. Gilby. I'll drop by in the morning. Good night, sir. Good night, Gallagher. Thank you. 
Gallagher, I've had a busy day. Take a look at this. You recognize it? No. It belonged to Judge McManus. Recognize it now? Well, I never knew Judge McManus well enough to notice what kind of a... Where'd you get this? Moran had it. You stole it. Well, first things first, Mr. Sneed. Now, doesn't this prove that Moran killed the judge? And like you say, first things first, how do you know this belonged to the judge? Because the witness who told me Moran had it recognized it as the judge's. Then how come James P. McManus's initials are C E D? Gallagher, you better take that ticker right back where you got it. And I'm warning you, if there's a robbery report turned in in the morning by Moran, this will be one time I'll know right where to find the thief. I just dropped by to wish you good luck. Well, thank you, Gallagher. That's very thoughtful of you. Well, good luck. Thank you. Lori, we better go to breakfast. Uh, you go ahead, Mom. I'll be right in. There's something I forgot to tell Gallagher about the Mustang he bought from us. Well, don't be too long. No, just a second. Did you get it? Yeah, and a pot full of troubles to boot. That's it. Are you sure? Positive. Well, then how do you explain this? C.E.D. doesn't stand for James P. McManus. I don't understand. I could swear this is the judge's watch. No, sure. The only one of its kind in the world. But C.E.D. aren't Moran's initials either. Maybe yeah, that's right. But what's it prove? Well, it at least proves that Moran stole it from somebody, doesn't it? You want to know the truth? All this is proven is that I'm the thief. There's one way to make sure. The judge's widow. She'd know. Huh? Hey, that's right. She would know, wouldn't she? Why didn't I think of that? Better hurry. Meet us at the courthouse. <laughs> What kind of a flea trap do you run here? I beg your pardon? I've been robbed of my watch. Robbed, Mr. Moran? Where were you last night? Really, sir? Were you on duty? Yes. Well, don't you keep an eye on who goes in and out? Well, uh... Hey, there was something. An inquiry about you. Me? Yes, young uh, Gallagher, the lad who works for the Blast. Uh, but it's absurd to think he'd have anything to do with it. I'm Gallagher from the Brimstone Blast. I have nothing to say for your paper, young man. It's no interview, ma'am. It's about this. Was it his? Where did you find this? I stole it from the man who stole it from your husband. Joe Carlson? No, ma'am. It was somebody else. Somebody else? 
Or was the judge wearing it the day that he... He was never without it. I gave it to him the day we were married. It belonged to my father. Then that's why the initials are different. Does this mean that they're, they're trying the wrong people down there? Yes, ma'am. And your identification of the watch could prove it. Well, then, we haven't a moment to lose. You go hitch up the horse and buggy, and I'll, I'll be right out. Yes, ma'am. You know, I never could understand why Joe Carlson would want to kill James. Well, everybody's been saying that the judge favored Hatfield over Mr. Carlson. Oh, no. Just the opposite. The judge favored Joe. Favored the Carlsons? Yes. He found some evidence. What kind of evidence, ma'am? Well, I really don't know. Something the judge heard about a railroad coming through. Railroad? That kind of information could mean a lot of money. Would you know if the judge left anything about that? In writing, I mean? I don't know. The public prosecutor came and took all his papers the day after he died. Mr. Prentice did that? Yes. Wait till Mr. Barlow hears about this. <laughs> You know the gentleman? That's Moran. He's the guy that stole your husband's watch. Can you drive a rig? Of course I can. Then get to town and tell the sheriff to get out here. And go to court and tell Barlow about the watch. You got that, ma'am? Yes. I'm gonna try and draw this guy off. He'll probably want me more than he does you. Tell Mr. Barlow I'll be in as soon as I can to testify against Moran. Get out!
That's a pretty lucky shot, Mr. Sneed. Well, I wouldn't exactly call it lucky. You know how I feel about violence. And shooting to kill has never been one of my policies. What am I sitting here for? I gotta get back to the courthouse. Can you handle him all right? Go on. Get into town. Get! Please, the court, I wish at this time to introduce a witness, Your Honor, Mrs. McManus, the widow of our late and esteemed judge. Your Honor, Your Honor, I fail to see the relevance of this witness, sir. This can only be a shameless no. attempt to gain sympathy for the defendants by emotional and sentimental trickery. That isn't true, I Your Honor. I move we continue with the no. witnesses in the order submitted to I this have... court. Mr. Prentice, I must at least allow the defense to show cause. I'll proceed. Thank you, Your Honor. My reason is simplicity itself. I would like to submit evidence to prove that we are trying the wrong man for murder. I must have order. I'll have this court cleared. Swear your witness, Mr. Barlow. Raise your right hand. You solemnly swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help you God? I do. that the judge was wearing this watch at the time he left the house? Yes, sir. Can you identify the watch? What? What in the world is this? It's the only way I could get in. Your Honor, this is the witness I've been expecting. Deputy, let that young man come forward. Oh, excuse me, Your Honor. Excuse me, Your Honor. I finished with this witness. Any questions, Mr. Prentice? Give me a step Your Honor, I have just been informed by young Gallagher here of the arrest of one George Moran by Sheriff Sneed, who is now on his way in with the prisoner. 
Moran was attempting to regain possession of this watch, which he stole from the judge at the time he murdered him. I would like to call Mr. Gallagher to the stand. It'll please the court. The prosecution concedes that the defense has cast grave doubt on the guilt of those presently accused. We therefore recommend discontinuance of this action in favor of a reinvestigation into the death of Judge McManus by the hand of one George Moran, motive robbery. Thank you, Mr. Prentice, but we must object to your stating the cause of this murder as simple robbery. Moran killed the judge because he was hired to do it. Objection. The motive at this time is irrelevant. The man in question is not on trial. But my clients are. I've already said. Gentlemen. Gentlemen. I see no reason to continue this case, sir. I've already offered discontinuance. Your Honor, it's my duty to clear my clients beyond the shadow of a doubt. I can only do that by showing who, what, and why is behind this crime. It is entirely relevant and in the interest of justice. Not to say most interesting. Let's proceed, Mr. Barlow. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, you may be excused for the moment, Mr. Gallagher. Instead, I call Mr. John Hatfield to the stand. Raise your right hand. You swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help you God? I will. Be seated. You presently lead a group, Mr. Hatfield, who has legal action pending against the Carlsons, do you not? Yes, sir. Would you tell the court why, please? Well, Carlson has all that open range, good farmland going to waste, that maybe he don't have the title to. You see? Is that your only reason, sir? Yes. Did you know of confidential plans to run a railroad right away through that section? Or well, did you? Yes. Did you know that Mr. Prentice was a member of the Railroad Commission? Yes. Did you know that Mr. Prentice took possession of the private papers of the late Judge McManus without permission, without legal right? Objection. This is extraneous and immaterial. Objections overruled. And the court is extremely interested in hearing the remainder of this question, sir. I'm sorry, Your Honor, if the question reflects on the honesty and integrity of Mr. Prentice. But I'm trying to establish that Mr. Hatfield headed up a dummy syndicate in order to gain possession of the Carlson's land by fair means or foul for speculative reasons. And the late Judge McManus was murdered by a hired killer because he happened to learn of their scheme and began to put the pieces of this story together, just the way I did, by information supplied by young Gallagher. Oh. By information supplied by... Stop that man! Don't shoot! Why? That's my bronze, and nobody rides him but me. Easy, boy. Easy. Gallagher! You were wonderful. Thank you. Gallagher! Thank you. Well, it wasn't just me, sir. You gotta give Crowley here a lot of the credit. Gallagher? Yes, sir? Run this over to Irm. Tell her we'll run it as an extra. Yes, sir. Now hurry back. You gotta help me tie up a lot of loose ends. Okay. Thank you. Get up there. 